All right, let's talk about ring strain. So essentially, we're going to be talking about cyclocompounds, and it turns out that there's extra strain associated with some of these molecules, all right? So if we look at sort of this PDF here, I just want to highlight, here I have the names of some different, different um, rings. We have cyclopropane, that's three carbons, cyclobutane, four, cyclopentane, cyclohexane 6, heptane 7, octane 8, and obviously there's a lot more we can form, all right? So here's sort of right below that is sort of our 2D version of what that looks like, and then right below that we sort of have a 3D drawing that we can visualize. So it turns out when we draw cyclocompounds that there is some strain associated with those, and ring strain is the general or sort of the summative form of three different types of strain. So ring strain is really composed of angle strain, torsional strain, and steric strain, okay? And some textbooks handle this a little bit differently in how they describe these strains, but I'm going to uh, take sort of the most widely, uh, the most common approach here. So first, let's talk about angle strain. So angle strain is really the increase in potential energy, so the molecule is less stable. So the increase in energy of a molecule, or the strain, due to bond angles deviating from their ideal values. Essentially, the geometric angle of the shape is different than the hybridization angle. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. Let's look at cyclopropane. So here's a molecule, cyclopropane, okay, three carbons, right? Each carbon has two hydrogens associated with it, right? So if we look at any one of these carbons here, what we notice is that is an sp3 hybridized carbon, right? So what is the bond angle, what's the ideal bond angle for an sp3 hybridized carbon? That is 109.5 degrees, okay? So this bond angle here, because it's sp3 hybridized, should be 109.5 degrees. But there's a challenge. We have a shape. That shape is a triangle, right? What shape in an equilateral triangle, or what is the bond angles for a triangle? Well, those angles want to be... 60 degrees. So we have a conflict here. Because this is a carbon, it wants to be 109.5, but because it's forming a triangle, it's actually 60 degrees. So what does that really mean? All right. That means that we're not getting ideal orbital overlap. Okay. So if we look at this bond in blue, let's draw in some of our orbitals here. If I draw in the orbitals, right, the orbitals are actually bent out a little bit, like such. So we're not getting the we're not getting a perfect sigma bond, right? We're not getting pure over orbital overlap, right? So we're not getting a perfect sigma bond, right? In a sigma bond, we want good orbital overlap, right? Like as such. The more orbital overlap you have, the stronger the bond. But because this is a triangle, we have poor or orbital overlap. And basically what that is equals is angle strain. Poor or orbital overlap equals angle strain. And it turns out this is the we, we, we only really see substantial angle strain in two molecules, cyclopropane and cyclobutane, okay? And it turns out if you draw cyclobutane in a three-dimensional shape, it does bend, so it's not a perfect square. But again, our bond angles, they want to be 109.5 versus it's a little greater than 90. These are still not matching up well. So we definitely have angle strain with cyclobutane. But once we get to five membered rings or higher, 
then you can get that ideal 109.5 and get good orbital overlap. So really we see angle strain is only an issue for our small rings, three or four. Next, let's talk about the next strain, steric strain. Steric strain or van der Waals strain, right, occurs when non-bonded atoms are forced close to each other, uh, closer to each other than their uh, van der Waals radii allow, right? Uh, we talked to this in a previous video. Remember, atoms are surrounded by electron clouds. If those are closer to each other than they want to be, because the electrons are all negative, they're going to repel each other, causing strain. All right? Specifically, steric strain is defined when we have interacting atoms that are f at least four bonds away. Okay, steric strain is when we have atoms that are four bonds away. And we've actually already talked about steric strain. That's what we have when we have a Gauss interaction. So a Gauss interaction is a perfect example of what steric strain is, right? So if I draw a Newman projection, and here I have a methyl, and here I draw an ethyl, right? This is a Gauss interaction. These atoms are four bonds away because the hydrogens on the methyl are interacting with the hydrogens on the ethyl. That's four bonds or greater away. So I, that is a Gauss interaction or Gauss strain. It increases the energy of the molecule, and we can generally call that steric strain. Okay? Let's look at our third type of strain, our third type of strain. Our third type of strain is called torsional strain. That occurs when atoms are separated by three bonds and they're placed in an eclipsed conformation. And again, we just saw this when we were talking about Newman projections. So anytime you're forced into an example where the hydrogens are eclipsed, that's called torsional strain, all right? And there's a good way to, to visualize this. Let's take a, a again, take a look at cyclopropane. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to draw a Newman projection of cyclopropane. So I'm going to take my eye and look down a bond. All right, so if I draw a Newman projection of this, what we'll see What we'll see, so this is our Newman projection of this. What you see with some of these small rings, right, these two hydrogens here in cyclopropane are, and these two are trapped, right, in a ring. They're trapped in an eclipse conformation. So again, something like cyclopropane has a lot of torsional strain as well. All right. So if we look at our strain, angle strain, is when your geometrical, geometric angle differs than the hybridization. Steric strain is when you have something that's gauche. Torsional is when you have um, bonds or atoms that are eclipsed. All right. So instead of sort of calculating strain, what I've done here is sort of just put a check mark if there's a lot of strain. So when we look at cyclopropane, we can see that there's a lot of angle strain and there's a lot of torsional strain. So that molecule is pretty high in energy because there's a lot of strain here. As we move up to cyclobutane, there's less angle strain, but still a good amount. And there's a lot of torsional strain because we now have more hydrogens interacting with each other. So there's a lot of strain associated with cyclopropane and cyclobutane, a lot of ring strain. As we get up now to, to rings of five atoms or more, there's a lot less strain. So we really don't have any angle strain anymore because there's enough atoms where the, the bond's angles can reach 109.5. Cyclopentane has a little bit of torsional strain and a little bit of steric strain. So that causes the molecule to be a little higher in energy. All right. I'm going to skip cyclohexane for a second, because if you look here, this is all empty, and that's going to be important. 
But if we go to cycloheptane, when we have rings that are seven or more, you see that in the 3D structure here, that it's not uniform. It's, it's, it's a little uh, chaotic in a way, right? So there isn't any angle strain here at all, but we still have some torsional strain and some steric train, strain. And that turns out for anything, for, for most, most rings, seven or higher, we're always going to have a little bit of torsional strain and steric strain, all right? Cyclohexane, right? Cyclohexane is really an interesting example because it has essentially no ring strain. And that's not perfectly true. There is a little bit of it, but it's essentially no ring strain. So cyclohexane is a very specific example because it can ad adopt a very specific 3D structure where our bonds are now all in the staggered conformation. So there's no ring strain. And actually, our next lesson, our next video, is going to be focusing on how to draw cyclohexane. So if you think about rings, what do you think the most common ring is that's found in nature? Obviously, it's cyclohexane because it has the least amount of strain. All right. So if we go and take a look at strain of some common cycloalkanes, right? you can see cyclopropane has a lot of strain, 27.5 kcals per mole, cyclobutane, 26.3. A lot less now when we have five rings or more. Cyclopentene only has 6.2. Here's our cyclohexane molecule, right? And again, essentially zero. And then as we go up to cycloheptane, uh, cyclooctane, so forth and so on, we can see we still have varying amounts of strain as we continue on and on, depending on our ring size. Okay, so basically what we need to understand here is cyclopropane and cyclobutane have a lot of strain. Cyclopentane is pretty low, but cyclohexane is really, really special, right? Because that has essentially no ring strain. And we're going to focus on cyclohexane in our next lesson.